buckle up, history detectives. We've got a real-life Houdunit from ancient times that'll blow your mind. Ashkelon, a city on Israel's southern coast, has been hiding a dark secret. Archaeologists made an unsettling find, a Roman-era mass burial site, and we're talking baby skeletons. What was going on in this once thriving city where a bathhouse stands as a possible clue? Get ready to unravel the eerie tale of what really went down in ancient Rome's not-so-spotless past. Imagine a city where empires rose and fell, leaving behind a legacy that shaped our world. That's Ashkelon for you. This Mediterranean seaport has been the epicenter of civilizations like Egyptians, Greeks, Persians, and Romans since 3500 BC. You've heard about their amazing contributions roads, books, concrete, and advanced plumbing systems. But there's another side to this rich history waiting to be uncovered in Ashkelon, a tale that will take us down a darker path. Let's dive into the unlikeliest of places, a sewer beneath an ancient Roman bathhouse in Ashkelon. Archaeologist Ross Foss was on a quest for hidden treasures when he stumbled upon something that made his skin crawl. While navigating through the narrow tunnels, his team uncovered a multitude of tiny bones that initially seemed like nothing more than old chicken remains. But as they dug deeper, a chilling reality emerged war. These were human infant remains from the Roman era, and their story was about to blow the lid off this ancient city's secrets. Now let's see what Ross discovered hidden in those ancient tunnels, over a hundred tiny skeletons of babies. The team knew they had to unravel this mystery, so they called in the expert, forensic anthropologist Professor Patricia Smith. She brought out her tool kit, loaded with cutting-edge tech and techniques, and got to work on these little ones from the Roman era. What could she possibly uncover about their lives and deaths? The questions were piling up, but Professor Smith was ready to dig deep and share some groundbreaking findings that would change everything. The investigation continued, and the results were both surprising and chilling. Professor Smith's tests revealed something truly astonishing not one of these tiny skeletons showed any signs of illness or disease. They were all perfectly healthy when they passed away. The baby's lives had been cut short just a week after entering this world. It was as if time had simply stopped for them. But the burning question remained what could have caused such a tragic fate? Was it an accident or something more sinister? Let's keep digging to uncover the shocking truth behind these baby skeletons. You're probably wondering what could drive someone to such a heinous act. Well, let's take a look back at ancient Rome, a society where infant killing wasn't just accepted, but even used as a form of birth control. It might sound harsh, but the Romans had some pretty twisted views on life. They believed newborns weren't technically human yet, so abandoning them was no big deal. If these tiny humans were lucky, they'd be found by someone to raise, but many met their end in the harshest of ways, left to face nature's fury. The Romans even thought the gods controlled who lived and died, making it all seem like fate rather than a cruel choice. It's mind-blowing to think how different attitudes towards life were back then. So, what happened next? If an infant survived the harsh conditions they were left in, it was seen as a sign that the gods had given them a second chance. But if things didn't go well, the Romans believed it was just part of their fate. Now you might have heard this famous story from Roman mythology, about twin brothers Romulus and Remus who were abandoned as babies, left to face the elements, but ended up being raised by a kind-hearted she-wolf instead. These little survivors grew up to become the legendary founders of Rome itself, showing that even when the odds are stacked against you, there's always a chance for an incredible turnaround. In ancient times, death wasn't viewed as something scary or unexpected feat. It was just part of life's journey. Now, let's dive back into our mystery, those baby skeletons we found in Ashkelon, right next to a bustling bathhouse. What drew these little ones to this spot? Well, archaeologists have been thinking about that, and they've come up with an intriguing theory. They reckon these babies might have had mothers who were sex workers, maybe even working at the very bathhouse where we found them. And here's what makes it all so surprising. The people in charge might not have wanted kids around, leading to some really tough decisions being made, and that's a story you won't want to miss. But that's not all. There's so much more to uncover about Ashkelon. This place used to be a trading powerhouse right on the Mediterranean coast, where cultures blended and stories were made for thousands of years. From fierce conquerors to merchants from far-off lands, Ashkelon saw it all. 
It had its ups and downs, but one thing's for sure. Every empire that came knocking left their mark. Let's take a quick peek at some of these empires, the Romans, who were definitely part of this tale, but we'll talk more about them later. Let's dive into a lesser known side of ancient Rome, their views on newborns and parenting. You might expect the Romans to be all about grandeur and sophistication, but when it comes to babies, their beliefs were surprisingly different. They didn't consider a newborn as a full human being right from birth, which led to some harsh realities. In essence, unwanted infants could be abandoned, leaving their fate in the hands of the gods. They believed the gods would decide what was best. If an infant survived against all odds, it was seen as a divine sign, but if they didn't make it, that too was just destiny playing out. This mindset might seem strange to us today, but it gives us a unique glimpse into ancient Roman values and their understanding of life's beginning. You might think that ancient Roman beliefs around abandoned newborns are shocking enough, but let's explore further. As we uncover more about their world, it's clear that abandonment was just one part of a complex societal picture. But here's where things get really intriguing. Researchers Patricia Smith and Jilla Kahila from Hebrew University dug deep into this mystery, starting their investigation back in 1988. What they found at ancient Roman sites left them with some surprising clues. Many of the tiny bones discovered were remarkably well-preserved, and in some cases, even whole skeletons were unearthed. The consistency in age across these infants, coupled with no signs of disease or environmental disasters, points to a deliberate act rather than a natural occurrence. This discovery raises more questions about the Roman world and its people's choices, making it clear that there's still plenty more to learn from our past. But the story doesn't end there. Patricia Smith and Gila Kahila had a hunch about these tiny remains. They theorized that many of these infants might have been girls. Given the disturbing trend of female infanticide in ancient Roman society, this wasn't just speculation. Historical letters from the time period reveal some chilling attitudes towards girls. One letter from 1 BC advised a pregnant woman to raise her boy but abandon any girl she gave birth to. Even the Roman poet Chuvenal hinted at this practice, describing babies being discarded beside sewage pits. These eerie details paint a picture of a society where life was valued differently depending on gender, and these tiny bones hold secrets about a culture that often overlooked its female children. And guess what? It's getting even more intriguing. To get to the bottom of this mystery, Ariella Oppenheim and her team from Hebrew University took a bold step. They extracted DNA from the bones themselves. You see, relying solely on skeletal analysis wasn't enough, because it often can't pinpoint whether these tiny remains belonged to boys or girls. But with DNA testing, the results were nothing short of astonishing. By studying the genetic material, they uncovered some jaw-dropping secrets about these ancient infants. And we're just about to dive into those surprising findings next. So, what did Ariella Oppenheim's team discover? Out of those 40, three left femurs they carefully analyzed. DNA extraction worked like a charm in 19 cases. And here's the twist. 14 were boys, while 5 were girls. Now you might think this supports the theory that these babies could have been unwanted, born to sex workers at the bathhouse. But wait, that's not adding up. If all the infants indeed came from such a setting, and were discarded without mercy, we'd expect roughly an equal number of boys and girls. Like a 50-50 split. But note, what does this surprise result tell us about these ancient infant remains? Now let's dig deeper into what these results mean. Normally, for every 20 boys born, you'd expect about 20, one girls. But here we've got way more males than females, 14 guys versus just five girls. This imbalance is super strange and makes us wonder if something else entirely was going on. Could it be that the guys were being tossed out while the ladies were kept to grow up and work in those bathhouses? That's one wild theory. But before we dive any further, let's look at another puzzle piece, the age of these sites. According to Harvard archeologist Larry Steger, both this sewer system and the nearby bathhouse date all the way back to the fourth century AD. Yeah, it seems there's a pretty big gap between when these structures were built and when we think the babies ended up in the sewer. So what do you guys think? How does this timeline fit into our mystery? Let's keep exploring where these little ones ended up, in a sewer gutter, buried under debris. But here's the thing this sewer system stopped being used around 500 AD. 
which is actually pretty close to when we think these babies live. So, it looks like they might have been around during the bathhouse's heyday. And if you're wondering what life was like in that era, consider this, archaeologist Larry Stager found some serious clues about 400 years ago. In a house near the bath and sewer system, he uncovered hundreds of oil lamps with wild designs some had erotic themes, while others showed off mythological scenes. What's even crazier is that these lamps were still wrapped up, like they'd never been used, leading Stager to think they might have just been for decoration or something. The theory was that the bathhouse wasn't a brothel, after all. But now we have these baby skeletons asking some big questions. But here's where things get even more intriguing, recent DNA analysis, published in Nature, suggests a strong connection between those mysterious lamps and the bathhouse itself, the, not the homes before it. This new evidence leans heavily towards the idea that this bathhouse might have been something way more than just a place to clean up. It raises the possibility that it could have also served as a Bob brothel. But historian John M. Riddle from North Carolina State University isn't buying into the whole brothel theory just yet. He's asking some big questions about historical records, pointing out that back then, people in the sex trade might have had ways to prevent full-term pregnancies, which would mean these little ones we found could be a puzzle piece that doesn't quite fit this new interpretation. What do you think? But John M., Riddle isn't convinced that Ashkelon's escorts would have been any different from their counterparts back then. He points out that historians like Jerome and Augustine, who lived centuries ago, were actually well aware of birth control methods used in their time, even condemning some of them. For example, Jerome blasted potions that made women infertile as a form of murder, while Augustine believed that until a fetus developed into more than just a blob, it wasn't considered human enough to be protected by homicide laws, since it didn't have senses or a soul. So, what does this mean for our mystery in Ashkelon? Did these ancient escorts really need contraception if they were avoiding pregnancies? And how might this change the way we think about the bathhouse discovery? And here's where things get really intriguing. Riddle's got another bombshell. After the first century AD, unwanted babies could have been sold as slaves, making infanticide or abandoning kids less necessary. This means our initial explanations might not fit the facts. The mystery just keeps unfolding. We started with a shocking discovery of nearly 100 infant skeletons in an ancient sewer beneath a bathhouse, a find that left scientists stunned and questioning what really went down in Ashkelon. Now, as we dig deeper into history, it's becoming clear how captivating, layered, and straight-up bizarre the past can be. Theories are swirling. Was it female infanticide, common brothel?